Pipe Network presents. On this episode of season four, let's talk. And uh, I said, you know what? Let me just pick up the camera and just, you know, just shoot some photos. Maybe I'll just, you know, find something in, along the way. And then I did. So I had my camera. My camera, by the way, my first camera was given by my mother. Um, she was really fond of it at the first time. So it was, I think, the latest model back. No, no, not really. The, the oldest model back then. And I said, can I borrow your cam? And then I just tried to just point and click. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show and I'm your host Rajiv Doreswami and this show aims to help reach out to those who are currently struggling in life and to remind you that life is indeed beautiful when you're inspired to make it your own. This episode is going to be fun because um, before I introduce the, the person that I'm going to talk to, uh, I gotta say that um, if everybody noticed all my pre- my personal uh, social media accounts, the person who gave that shot, it's actually several shots of that. Um, I want to shout out to this guy before I even introduce him, Ian Viernes. You gotta you gotta uh, you gotta listen to this conversation because this is gonna be intense. Um, now let me introduce Ian. Ian, pal, how you doing? Hey, so I'm. Ian, <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm a long time friend of uh, Rajiv. We we go way back in University of Baguio since 2014. I think 2015. I met you 2014, 2014. and uh, 2015, right? Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, it's been a really fun ride, right? So true, uh, true. you you've been the guy that I've been really in touch for many interesting conversations and. Uh, For those conversations, we've gone through many walks of life, I guess. We've True. been talking with uh, things like uh, spirituality, things like, you know, social dynamics and stuff like that. So, yeah, it would, it would be really fun. And thank you. Thank you, Mero, in, uh, for, for inviting me to this yeah. podcast. I've always wanted to talk to you for a very, very long time because um, uh, if uh, some of you don't know, uh, Ian is a phenomenal videographer and um, um Videographer, photographer, you... and he's made my brand. Because uh, I, I got a salute to this guy because uh, if not for him, without that photograph, I would never have a brand, a photo of mine that is going to be saying a brand that I live on for for a longer time. So let's get into the meat and bones of this conversation. Um, could you give a little bit of background uh, about yourself aside from the things that I've given? <laughs> Yeah, so I'd love to. Um, thanks, Barrow. Just to uh, make a a very good point to that picture. So, fun story, a little story before I introduce myself. Uh, that's that picture actually is taken by my with my iPhone, which True. I still have right now. And uh, a story <laughs> behind that is that uh, I, I actually um, had a <laughs> an interesting situation there because I lost my camera back then, and I'm trying to be how do you know uh how do you because i'm a communication student and um when i was in my third year second year i was doing many many fo- fo- photo classes and uh yeah um, video classes so <laughs> i need i really badly need uh uh you know a tool for me to do those projects so um interesting i i just resulted to just use my phone to just you know take the damn photo because i know you've been really waiting for that Uh, True. photo True. session for a very very long time so yeah <laughs> anyway so yeah the, that's it for the uh, picture so yeah. again my name is ian you can just check out the links or social media links will be on the description or you can just look find me at my website rianvernes.wixsite.com slash vision and uh there you can see more of my photographs my projects some of my Some of my um, links, social media links, so you can find me in Twitch. Um, I I stream there from from Saturdays to Sundays, so that's weekends. Because uh, during the weekdays, I'm currently working as um, video or audio editor for a US-based real estate company. So I work a graveyard shift for the most of my time, 
And um, for the rest of the day, I just sleep. And I do a productive sleep, uh, which, by the way, is really important, especially in these times of um, pandemics, wherein we're just isolated and stuff like that. So, rest, you friends, and uh, drink your water. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and um, my first question that I normally ask my interviewees is, uh, who are you in high school? If you and I were classmates, of course, you, as mentioned earlier, uh, you and I were classmates in college. But this question is basically, who were you in high school? Were you the big guy with the, the mm -hmm. girls or the guy at the books, you know, in the library? Or are you in the back of the class or in the front of the class? Who were you in high school? <laughs> That's a really interesting question. I've never, uh, never been asked by that uh, question. So who am I in high school? I'm basically that kind of guy if we we're talking about like first year you know what, what are we like um talking about is it fourth year like high school because you know by the year i changed and um it's been really interesting to track those days but for the most part i'd say i'm the type of guy who is known i guess for some quite interesting stuff i guess for dancing and um Ooh. for having a bigger brother who uh, always stood stands up in, in my side to defend me so yeah. basically i'm a very very scrawny guy if you just see me <laughs> you can just see me i'm just a really scrawny guy so um one more when i was uh, when back then when i was in high school so uh, yeah that was um most of it and um for my most of my high school days i got to be picked on since i'm very scrawny <laughs> and uh, i i didn't really excel well on academics and um, yeah academics so I I tend to lean more of my energy and uh, focus more of that in developing my character so mm -hmm. when I say developing my character I try to go to different kinds of you know when you have those high school groups and uh, you know that there are you know the, the cool kids the rich mm -hmm. kids they have the you know just like what you were saying you you get to be uh, labeled by statuses and stuff like that so yeah. i'm the kind of guy that's neutral right so mm -hmm. i can go with um the cool guys the lame guys or like the the geek guys i can go with theater guys i can go with you know girls and stuff like that so <laughs> i could easily like um like i'm i'm a chameleon i guess <laughs> so i'm really chameleon. versatile in that sense <laughs> adaptive correct correct exactly so yeah, and um, since I'm not really a very academic guy back then, I tried to engage in many performing art, arts. So that includes also sports like um, volleyball, basketball, um, tennis, table tennis, you know. It's uh, more of like a physical interaction. And yeah. then by the weekends, um, by the weekends we're forced, we're forced to go to Catholic school to learn more about you know the christian traditions and right. whatnot so yeah basically just a shy kid i guess i don't know <laughs> that's interesting you mentioned the word character and um it's interesting right i want to open into a, a character you've actually opened a lot of boxes which uh, is, uh, I'll, I'll get back to those boxes but the first box that you open is character and i want to ask you the second question is who is your greatest motivator and why? Wow. Damn. It's just... Uh, okay. I can do that. My greatest motivator would be my father. Definitely mm. my father. But, um, for a very long time, of course, my my guy has been really a legend. You know? mm. He's been a legend for many, many things. He's been, um, he's been burnt. He's been... Uh, he's been a soldier. He's a lawyer. He's a he's a provider. He's a defender. He's a driver. He's everything that I I, I wanted to be. So he's an engineer. He is an artist. He is um, a preacher. He's really most um, I'd say amazing in many ways. And for that, I'm extremely you know eternally grateful for having him in my life. Yes, hmm. and um. Being being uh, the son of a great you know person, he's not really like a, a very rich person, but I'd say he's rich and wealthy in terms of like having connections. Hmm. So we 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 develop 
relationships with different kinds of people because we we think of them as assets, right? So mm. not really thinking of like uh, how we use them, them, how we use them as a, a way for us to get money, but more of like we use them to support us. We mm. use them to find us more opportunities. So it's really hard if you're out there and trying to make opportunities for yourself. Mm. It's really uh, wise for you to develop connections with different kinds of people. Um, just uh, maybe a short background with uh, who my father is. So mm. he he um, he was born in in Mindanao. So he he was a uh, one of those freedom fighters. I guess someone like a guerrilla type of group. And then he grew up to being a teenager. <laughs> so that was really young. Mm. Um, doing all of those crazy stuff and then he went to Manila to find work and then from there he asked um, me, most or all of his relatives to find him work to go abroad mm. and then um, as young as I think uh, around 20, 21, 22 mm. he was able to go and travel to Oman where we were born mm. so Oman is a really peaceful Gulf or um, Arab country and uh, from from there, um, he took my mother like two years after he settled down, and then um, he was able to fund uh, a plane ticket for our family to grow and develop, you know, in that country. And then um, from there, he's a mechanic. So I think he worked for sales before, and then he became a mechanic. And then from there, he got promoted to lead mechanic, or what we call. Um, what do you call that again? It's just something like uh, a lead mechanic, I think. Oh, foreman, right? Foreman, yeah. right? So, um, being a foreman of a garage is really hard. So you're like a leadership. There's a leadership behind it, and uh, aside from being a father, being a breadwinner, mm. um, being a leader is a different kind of role as well. So, it's really interesting because. Um, I know I've been. I, I'm. I'm really young. I I've, can vividly remember how I enjoyed his workmates before. Cause, um, we all live in the same cottage, or like uh, we, we, our houses, our houses were like, um, in in one like how do you say in one apartment but different rooms, right? Mm. So we're like basically living with one another, but then we just have our own separate rooms, and then um. For the longest time, we grew up to be, you know, having a, our own little Filipino community in the middle of an Arab country. Mm. So it was uh, really peaceful. We grew up and developed our own, I don't know, so physical culture. skills or you know, social culture, correct? Um, by having to practice, I don't know, social, um, you know, more on going to school and um, trying to do physical stuff like running and bike biking and then uh, from there I really took off from my father when actually this is what a really funny story because when I was talking to my father um, when I was young he used to call me as uh, this is my first production so my first production ever in my life hmm. was actually um, really memorable because I was my, my first role was not actually an assistant Hmm. I was more of a light engineer. <laughs> uh, oh. I know most of um, most of '90s kids would truly relate to this kind of. I don't know if um, people have experienced this kind of um, feeling with their mechanic dad or you know yeah. their you know mechanic anything that works with you know cars and stuff like that. So hmm. I was the one who held up that that light, you know, during the night. So I, I held that light up for him to see the inner parts of the machine or like the the, the car that he's trying to fix. Mm. So like uh, of course we live in we live and breathe with um, cars. So mm. from cars we get money when he fixes the stuff. So he just needed a little support or like um, someone to hang hang out with. Because when you're when you're working in Oman and it's really. A deserted place so mostly you're working alone you only mm. uh, don't you don't have any interaction up un unless you call someone right so everyone's just on their own and um, it's really kind of lonely so he was always you know calling for me 
asking me questions like um what do you want to be when you grow up and stuff like that and uh, i i became just the light man and stuff like that so i got i i i i've been also the coffee coffee uh, how do you say i used to make him coffee when i was mm. young and uh that's i think part of being a production assistant i guess <laughs> so that's um that's uh, how i grew up with him and then um you know uh, as time passes by he just became this father figure wherein he resonated more of like who do i want to be when i grow up you know so like um it's not really having to experience the same kind of events like mm. say for example he made us feel the excitement of having to go fishing to go um camping to go hiking to go adventure you know we're more of like adventuring camp um family like we used to go many places with different activities and um that's really really fun if you try to imagine that and picture that um for those who are listening it's just that it's really amazing when you have that kind of um childhood where in your especially now if you're trying to compare it with you know kids growing up right now in the hmm. di- digital age where in everyone's just leaned into computer or technology and not having the experience i know it's really you know generic to even hmm. talk about this and uh, yeah Uh, it's really funny because there are, there are many different kinds of perspective in this so for my perspective um it's not just merely about having to play with other kids you know like the usual one like having to play patentero or like tayatayaan and stuff like that or langit lupa but in my seek. case it's more <laughs> of like uh yeah hide and seek correct yeah. so um uh In my case, we didn't really have more interaction with different kids. We have interaction with family first before we went out of the community or the the circles of life. So, and then uh, from there, I experienced you know hiking, traveling deserted lands, and um, venturing unknown places. And from there, I got uh, a drive for hmm. me to look for something that is unknown and. Uh, this just like podcasting just like knowing different kinds of stories from different people really <laughs> you know fascinated me in any ways possible so yeah that's pretty powerful that's pretty yeah. powerful <laughs> uh before we get into the next question do you want to li- leave a little bit of shout out to dad if he's tuning into this episode by any chance <laughs> awesome Yeah, so uh, I let him know. Actually, I have some friends who are waiting for this to go out. So mm. I told them um, I've been chatting with different kinds of you know groups of mine, and I tell them, you know I'm just gonna chill out and uh, have a chat with this dear friend that I have before in college. And uh, yeah, they they're really looking forward to this one. I think this is going to be uh, one hell of a. Actually, they were, they were asking me if this is going to be live so they can oh. they can watch. <laughs> so they they're really that excited for for this conversation but yeah that's it so uh my next question is of course uh we uh, as i men- uh, as i mentioned in the previous two questions is of course is more in the past now we're going to transition into mm. the present so uh this awesome. is a bit uh philosophical uh, you can take this uh the way however you can is that in this point in your life you know fresh graduate you and i are also in the same batch fyi what made yeah, you who you are yeah. <laughs> what made you who Ooh, you are awesome cool so just like much of having you know the guy that i was talking about my father and stuff like that so i asked my 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 um, myself that, hmm. that same question like um how do you want it to be when you grow up and when you do grow up would you be where do you want to be like kind of like that question i know it's quite a draft but hmm. anyway um in the present who i am right now is a more of a consequential decision by my past of course like sure. um if you des- decided to be um wh- whatever you know it's really going to lead up to where you are right now and um i really The, the past is really a good um, connection to everything of this, of course. And um, sure. for most of that, the reason for most of who I am today is because, one, because of my family. That's a really big thing. 
Second would be my own personal growth. So family could teach you, right? But yeah. it's still so since you have a teach you have a teacher, right? So when you have a teacher, you need to have a student. So I am the student of that mm. teacher. So being the student, you have to find your own um, drive, right? So you you yourself know that you needed that kind of teaching or knowledge or experience. But then you still need another big part of it, which is having to be thirsty, be hungry for knowledge, be in pursuit of something that is unknown. So what made me, you know, what made me me mm. is um, more of that same, that same pattern of having to um, strive, to strive for more, for greatness, for something not really fame, but more of something that is challenging, you know, it's, um, one one teacher told me, or my mentor before in high school, before hmm. we were about to leave for college, once told me, like, um, or once told the batch, like, uh, if you're trying to look or find ways for you to like decide for college and what course will you take, because that's going to define your life for the next few years, right? So yeah. that's a very very crucial stage for you to decide. So just remember this: no, no easy thing will teach you so better find the hardest thing that yeah. you could ever think of and take for and take it so and i and i tried to like remember that as i entered college and i thought of what am i bad at you know what am i what's the worst thing that i i need right mm. so the worst thing would be you know pursuing math right so i'm, I'm really yeah. as i told a while ago I, i'm not an academic guy. So I didn't really excel, yeah. Um, in terms of academics, so and uh, I said, you know what? I'll just take engineering because <laughs> that's the <laughs> hardest thing. <laughs> and uh, funny enough, funny enough, that whole that whole part of the college thing really molded me in uh, who, who I am right now. So three um, back in 2016, mm. uh, that was my first year in college. So I was in SLU. 2016 or was it 2016 no 2013 2013 yeah 20, i met you 2013 2017 right. <laughs> so it's kind of weird yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it was a wrong timeline yeah. <laughs> so anyway so it was 20 2013 that's seven years from now and seven years ago i took up bachelor's bachelor of science major mm-hmm. in mechanical engineering mechanical engineering because i was so inspired by my father so yeah. i have a guidance right there yeah but then she he my father and my mother didn't really you know um made a firm decision for me to choose one specific course you know just mm. like most of the filipino kids right now who are yeah. suffering in their <laughs> choices because of their parents choices yeah and um that's i've been one of those lucky bastards who get to choose whatever i want and i get to be supported by whatever i want so i didn't really take that for granted i guess the problem with it is that i didn't really go as much as i think it would affect my life so what i did was so i did pursue the hardest thing which is math and that engineering too that's extra extra yeah. difficult, difficult so um after a three year, three years after that year, so that was 2016. Yeah. When I finally um, had a severe depression, um, I suffered severe depression not clinically, hmm. but I feel like I was in that stage because I really didn't find any fi- uh, any kind of motivation to go out. I was so afraid of having any social interaction, hmm. and um, also I be- I become I became. I became um, manip- manipulative to my pr- parents. So what happened was they thought that I was still going to college in the same school, in the same university, and the same course. But actually, I just stopped. And it's really, it's really funny that when I, uh, I tried to reach that kind of point of life, wherein I said, "I'm not gonna experience those because that's dumb." You yeah. Know? That's dumb. That's really dumb. Why, why would you go to a bar scene and try to buy your friends, right? So that's really dumb. Yeah. And um, I never realized that it's going to be <laughs> it's going to hard uh, to to hit me as hard as it should. But back then, so oh, so um, yeah. That 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 whole kind of thing happened, and uh, 
after that i tried to pick myself up and then uh you know what this whole thing is just really boring it's yeah. um becoming regular for me to get drunk every night and come home and just be feel more emptiness and sa- sadness after all and uh i said you know what let me just pick up the camera and just you know just shoot some photos maybe i'll just you know find something in along the way and then i did so i had my camera my camera by the way my first camera was given by my mother yeah um she was really fond of it at the first time so mm. it was i think the latest model back no no not really the, the oldest model back then and I said, "Can I borrow your cam?" And then I just tried to just point and click, and from there I tried to develop this sense of, "Oh, that's cool!" Like mm. um, that that's really that that um, my attention got really um, directed to a specific point, and I wasn't really thinking of like, "Am I sad? Am I happy?" No, I was just fascinated. I was really happy, you know. I was in that in that specific idea of like thinking of what is important or having direction mm. right just like when you when you take a photo right this, this is really the uh, important aspect or fascinating point of having to take a photo or show a photo so the story of course is the main or the king of why the the photo um, has an impact but more of that is the elements so the mm. elements would be having the direction or the focus right so mm. what's your focus when you're when you're taking a photo so your focus if it's your subject is like a person you have to blend in or make that subject be the prominent subject or element in that picture so I, this is going to be functional or technical but yeah i guess what i'm trying to say is that when you look at When you look at a photo, you don't think of what are you going going to do next, right? So what what you what you're feeling, what what was your what was what were your desires and stuff like that. You're not thinking mm. about anything. You're just thinking about that photo, and that's mm. really fascinating. It, it has a deeper power to it because you get to be focused into one thing, especially if it's the photo that that captured you like um really there's a deeper meaning to that picture mm. so um, i had the same feeling when i had um, my friends taken a photo of my friend's friend mm. it was a candid photo and um she was i think she, i i really liked her back in high school and she took that uh, he took that photo uh, out of random cause and i really felt like there is so much so much happiness and just that picture because of her smile and by that i didn't really think of like my exam tomorrow or like what am i going to do next and stuff like that so i guess that's just it i mean i'm sorry if i have been talking for quite some time now but um basically you know after that whole phase of depression stage and drinking and stuff like that hmm. um i just picked up the camera and then asked Um, my friends to maybe I can shoot for them and then cover some you know dance covers and you know, some friends who wanted to excel as well in the music industry and then I yeah. said you know what I, maybe I can maybe I can be your middleman maybe I can be your production side so yeah. let me take the let me take a video of what you're doing and then maybe we could share it online you can, you, you you will not pay me you just I, I just wanted to try you know experience just like what you're trying to do right now you don't have mm. an experience I don't have an experience let's experience together so mm. you know we there, there was this kind of idea of having to share the same idea of growth and mm. developing a skill so it was just from one project it turned into another and then to another and then to another it's just a snowball so after that mm. um you know i think i have sufficient pro- portfolio so i i think hmm, maybe i should you know venture up youtube and then from youtube maybe i could go to studio and then i did that I spent like hours, hours, thousands of hours for me to understand the inner workings of a camera and how do we uh, create compositions that would make or resonate to a person's life. So after that, I applied for a studio and then I said, mm. hey, um, are you looking for a photographer and stuff like that? So maybe I can help, maybe assistant and stuff like that. And then they said, oh, actually, um, we're just a starting company. Maybe you can join us. And I said, cool. Then uh, 
right from there I got to you know go with them shoot w- uh, weddings and birthday parties and stuff like that and then from there they taught me various things like I've been they become they became my first teacher in the field of photography and stuff like that and yeah from there on it's just a uh, big bigger snowball I guess of mm. having the passion to drive with you know mm, after memories from there I, I think I need to go to school and finish my degree you know <laughs> and mm. then uh, I went to University of Baguio and then I said maybe I should enroll something um, media since mm. that's mostly photographs and video right so then yeah. I said eh, let's just do it and then I did I did it, and then uh, I got enrolled, and four years after, I'm, I graduated, and now I'm a audio editor, yeah, <laughs> and a real estate company, yeah. Fascinating, I love it. The, I <laughs> love the story. Um, uh, I don't know what to do now. I mean, that's phenomenal. I mean, I, <laughs> it's funny. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you were saying, you were saying. I could ask you the same questions, like what you were, you like. I know, I know this is your podcast, and you wanted yeah. to feature me, but actually, I, I've been really wondering, like, what are your thoughts as well? Like, how did you? I know, I know, you have told many of your stories in your site, and by the way, yeah. I'm so sorry if I've been yeah. a really bad friend to not check check you up and stuff like that, because you yeah. know, um, just no like Michael, we have our own, yeah, stuff yeah. like grind and stuff like that so but don't worry I, I'll, I'll try my best to like check check up on on your content as well for the next few days and uh, maybe I could understand more of your story like your history and stuff like that because we had this similar similar conversation before yeah but not quite as deeper I guess so yeah it maybe if I were recorded. to ask you a question <laughs> Yeah, sure, yeah sure. exactly it wasn't recorded <laughs> so if yeah. I was to uh, I, were, I were to ask you a question like if if you had um maybe oh wait, wait what what was the last question oh right so who who were you today was it no, how did, i mean how did I was you become for your you question yeah i mean yeah you answered right, right. that exactly exactly yeah. so that that would exactly so i wanted to ping or like shoot back the same question like how did you be you how, how did you become you right now right um to, to me uh the the journey of the life is uh, spectacular. It's um, I, I, there are a lot of details that I've missed out in, of course, the seasons, uh, the previous seasons that I've uh, seen, uh, I've gone through, and um, in the in the context of uh, identity philosophy, it was always a searching thing. I, I I've um, um, as some of you know, uh, those who are tuning in, is that I am an artist and I'm a musician. And uh, the musician part is a generic thing because my dad, my mom's a musician. And um, for me, ever since I was young, I've always had this sense of identity, uh, a yearning for an identity. But at, at some point, I've, I've led to, uh, to realize that um, uh, it's uh, with all the things that I've gone through, it's that... Um, you you get to discover and unpeel the layers of life by going through something whether you're going in uh, with full sight or blind sight you're still you're still getting to uh, you're still getting to where you are and uh, i've reached a point where uh, i see something new and uh, i've always wanted to try that because uh, coming from the coming from the artist and the musician side um, i've always looked Outside, I wanted to always try something new, uh, and um, that's when the podcasting thing came. And I think I've mentioned this also in my previous episode that after being a fresh graduate of music, I really want to give up uh, the artistic side of life into per- in pursuing something that is not uh, generic, and I want to start that. and um, And I'm I'm starting the projects. The projects are taking off. The Rajiv show is taken off, and uh, other future ventures that will you'll be seeing soon will will take off, and um, and I'm starting to enjoy it, uh, but not to say that I've uh, disconnected and this this vowed all my my connections with artists and uh, the artistic side and uh, saying, uh, I'm still 
I'm still out of habit. I'm still somewhat a perfectionist in in terms of what I do, and um, for the things that I do in in terms of uh, what has happened to me lately, um, I've been working a lot on the marketing side, and I'm starting to enjoy it. I mean, making content, getting content out on social media. I'm starting to enjoy that, and with the podcast, with the podcast community, of course, uh, I'm starting to enjoy that and to make that. Uh, feel more appealing and authentic to me is more like um, uh, a satisfying thing for me now because um, I'm, I've taken the leap outside of where I am grown into and uh, hopefully from there on out um, build and you know build and keep building and keep growing as as you mentioned character so what made me who I am today is um I just I just love what I do and I'm always searching for the next best thing. I'm never settling down. So I hope I answered that uh, question. Yeah, dude, that's a very powerful um, answer. Actually, funny enough, like um, recently I've been talking to many different kinds of people as well, like people from Netherlands and um, US and Switzerland and um, Europe parts of like Berlin um, Paris and stuff like that so and something resonated with me is that when you say you're always going for the next best thing right so um despite all of the adversities like all of the problems that we are fine or we're we're struggling right now like the pandemic and trying to cope up with you know modules and stuff like that yeah these are the things the problems are these are the things that would make or break a person right so if you give up right now you're not going to certainly um find the best version of yourself right so yeah thinking of like relationships right so maybe uh that's a good question for you as well. uh, my question would be like somehow um how with your relationships are you looking for a partner for a long time and uh you know that kind of vibe but before that uh, before you answer that let me just share something that um a quote a quote from a friend recently who just told me so he said i got emotionally and physically abused but by my own family but you know what i'm proud of yeah i'm proud that every insult that i received i was able to call on god and ask god to bless them and take care of them and prayed that he would set me free from all the pain i have inside of me so like that that is so powerful like when we go through hardship we get to know more of ourselves mm. we see the part of us whereas we need to work on mm. right so um the pain the pain that he physically and emotionally um took he didn't replicate or he didn't um reflected that same pain to the same people what he did was he offered he offered that pain mm. he offered the pain to something divine mm. right so it's really interesting because normally what what would people do is replicate the same thing so for example if if you hurt me i'll hurt you the same way you hurt me yeah. or even worse right yeah but then right these are the people right that really inspires me so it's really fascinating and it's just one one person so f- imagine the, the 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 different kinds of people that you know your friends that yeah. thousands of your friends have different kinds of perspective on like how do they overcome adversity and stuff like that so, yeah uh, interesting um before i answer your question uh we're gonna have a little bit of short break And uh, folks will be right back. If you want to learn something new or useless about the world around you, why don't you try listening to the Banyu Podcast Reflushed on Spotify, Anchor, or any podcast app that you use. Hey folks, uh, welcome back to the Rajiv Show. And uh, just before the break, uh, we had an interesting conversation. Uh, It felt like the tables have been turned and in a good way. I mean, in a good way. Uh, my guest is Ian Viernes, a phenomenal photographer and artist of uh, a phenomenal artist who made my my profile picture and uh, he made it iconic for me. 
for me personally, he made it iconic. And uh, let's get into the con- let's get back into the conversation. Yes, you had a question for me. Right. So uh, the question was uh, sorry to derail the whole um, conversation, but anyway, the question is: uh, Are you looking for a partner right now? And what are your so- thoughts and goals for the next few years? I guess or the f- next few days. Uh, I'll answer the goals later on, but the relationship-wise is. Um, I, I had a conversation with uh, with a friend of mine, of course, before this uh, uh, this recording, and uh, we we spoke about re- relationship. Uh, and I've mentioned that I am a hopeless romantic. Um, <laughs> it's funny uh, when people ask me in college. I normally answer, "I will conform nor deny <laughs> such allegations." But uh, in this context, I do say that um, I I I am. And I am not looking for a relationship. Um, throughout the past few times that I have tried, um, it it uh, it seems to be clear that um, I am yearning for something more. And this is kind of connected to the the plan, the the question that you you asked. The second question is that um, the starting of the project, the Rajiv show, it opened up a lot of doors. Uh, it opened up a lot of doors for me and. Uh, and uh, in the long term, this is kind of where I am now in terms of uh, what I want to do. I have other side projects as well. Don't get me wrong. I don't really feel stressed enough about it. I actually feel excited about it. But in terms of uh, saying relationship-wise, uh, I've met a lot of girls before. I'm not saying I'm a chick boy or anything, any of that sort. Um, my main reasoning behind that is to find uh, something uh, in order I, I know myself well enough but I want to know the kind of person that can resonate in my frequency in terms of relationships I think we all know that when you are in a relationship it's all about vibing it's all about the thing and um, I guess to me the way I see it is that you in order to find out what you want you gotta go try something you know and I, I don't know if you agree with me with that but in in this in the context of uh, trying out, it doesn't mean that you have to go uh, in, do it in the negative way. Getting to know people, building a baseline, and all that stuff. So for me, I think I'm in that phase where I like to meet new people, and uh, I like to learn. I like to study. I like to understand. And in such a way, if I see the person in the long term, I always uh, I am a ho- uh, hopeless romantic, as I mentioned, and I like to see things long term. I kind of. I kind of envision it in such a way that if I'm having a conversation with this person, could I have a could I have the same conversation from today till forever, till wherever, till of course till I pass on. So I'm always uh, I'm I'm still building my my rep- uh, my my way of building relationship. I'm still learning how to communicate and find what I really want in terms of relationship. But in terms of um, of the future, the foresight that I have for my future is, of course, looking for something that will define me, build bridge and uh, build bridges to islands that I've never traveled into, and uh, build build a relationship with people and build that social network for uh, a social network for me personally. So, I think I've answered the question uh, without much sugarcoat, and uh, that's how I perceive life. I mean, I'm still. Uh, it, it it goes back to the last question, which I'm still looking, I'm still figuring it out. So yeah, that's really awesome. Dude. Like uh, how you phrased it or reframed the question or like the answer by saying you're looking but you're not, right? So like uh, that's really good as well that you could do that. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. In a, in a way, it it uh, the past few people that I've met over the past few years uh, I kind of slowly built a standard uh, standard uh, thing uh, a standard category for who I think is ideal and uh, I, I want to keep that personal but uh, I, I kind of built a standardization I don't say discriminative uh, standardization in way in a way that if I were to think about this long term I would answer the question what do you want kind of thing you know when 
that's kind of the question that some some of us don't ask ourselves what do we want in our life what do we want in our relationship if we can't answer that we can't really we can't really do anything about it if we say we do not know it's sure that it's definite that it's a no so if if you can answer what do you exactly. want something specific there is no know? i don't know there's yeah. only yes or no right yeah. definitely yeah i i i um i truly understand what you're saying there and uh, that's really interesting how the people have this nef- defensive mechanism of trying to un- answer something and when they say i don't know yeah. you know actually that they know what they their ash- their answer is it's just that they're it's either maybe they're struggling like to trust other people and answer that because in a way they become more vulnerable and stuff like that so in a way yeah and uh, my my experience uh, i'm i don't mean to belittle filipinos but in my experience it's um uh it's been a tough road for for, for me to communicate my thoughts uh one is it's not just a personal thing that i've faced uh i'm sure that uh, uh you and i in college you and i only mm. i you you know very fair well enough that i only talk to a handful of people and uh, there's a reason behind that and uh, also i've mentioned this in the previous conversation uh is that uh, i look for a way to standard uh, standardize my way of thinking and i want to elevate my thinking uh i am not the kind of person who is interested in listening to someone talk about their tita for hours and hours you know their neighbors and then their neighbor's dog and all that stuff <laughs> that's the thing that's my filter mechanism when it comes to conversation And yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's one thing that uh, I always yearn for in uh, saying uh, in, in a decent uh, thing because everything in life is all about value, and I always look for that value, that edge. Because if uh, saying if I don't find any value in the in a person's conversation, the the, the question is what am I doing with the, what am I doing with my life? And then that's the <laughs> that's the main gist of that uh, thing that uh, thing so i i tend to i tend to hear them out and then if it's a worth worth conversation worth keeping i keep it i memorize it but if it's not then it's not really worth my time i just use it as a passing phase and um, i go find something that uh, that i can add value to so yeah that reminds me actually uh, i have to sorry i have to disagree when you say that you only talk to a handful kind of um, people but uh, actually he did um, talk to many kinds of people and especially in our you know college um, life or time yeah um, which was fairly recent actually <laughs> if it comes to think of it but yeah uh, you know I, I fondly or distinctly remember who you are actually who your character um, growing in the university because you know for those who are listening or those who are watching or whatever um rajiv is the type of guy who's going to go around and when i say around i mean <laughs> around the whole the whole court so for example if you are in the university right and you're watching a basketball match yeah it's um team a and team b and th- both teams are really you know um very good i'd say you know i, I don't know if how to what which adjectives are anyway Yeah. So the 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 court or the the whole gym is full or packed, right? Yeah. But then you'll see this guy, this guy Rajiv. Rajiv will be going around the whole court, <laughs> not really inside, but outside, just trying to um, converse with or like talk with different <laughs> kinds of people with different departments and different schools. So you may not be, you know, that kind of shy shy guy as you think you are, but actually you are that kind of out outgoing person that you you think you are so <laughs> yeah um my main my explanation to that is uh it is funny uh <laughs> you pointed that out uh to some people who are listening and getting confused by what i meant when i had a tough time in college if if they've tuned into the previous episode uh what ian is uh, what ian said is uh, is actually true uh in, in a way uh The earlier years when I started out, and I think uh, you were, you and I were classmates on the second year, and I think that was second semester or first mm-hmm. semester. Humanities. Yeah. Right. Uh, the main uh, reason why that happened was uh, during my earlier years, uh, 
uh, I came back. To, uh, I that was 2015. I was fresh off of India, and uh, uh, I was fresh off uh, an isolation and depression period. Uh, from from my standpoint of things, is that my only way of conversing with people is the way I converse with my dad, and um, it's uh, it, in my in my defense. Uh, my my natural instinct is to always break the ice when it comes to conversing with people, and um, it was just that during the time uh, I joined college, uh, it, it was fun. The first years, the first two years were fun, and then it started deteriorating. Although I had no, uh, I had a f- sort of popularity, it, it deteriorated from third year on uh, from the, the second half of uh, of uh, the second year. And uh, and there was a reason behind that, and that was because of the controversies that uh, surrounded. But for me, my main intention was to basically have a conversation and connect with people. Of course, I think from my standpoint, and I learned it in reflection, was that I my my approach to certain people were not uh, uh, palatable to them. I, I think my approach was more different, and that's when things became bad for me so that's when i started distancing myself to people but in my in my intentions probably uh, they they would have had a different viewpoint of what they were looking at me and their perspective was much more different than mine so from then on out i chose a different path where i would be comfortable doing what i do uh, conversing how i say if the person that i'm speaking to resonate well it, it so happened that if i every time i go to college uh, I'm uh, the people that I know that I converse well with are people that are not even from my batch. It's funny, my classmates. I've never really been close with them because the conversations with them were not really the kind of conversations that I wanted. But if I I remember distinctively my second year and my first year, is that I converse uh, with uh, different uh, schools at that time. I conversed from your department, mass communication. Uh, I think I've also conversed with uh, English and uh, I even outside of our department I think I've conversed yeah, with yep. dentistry uh, different schools too yeah. IT, IT HRM dentistry HR. whatever uh, nursing for, forensics <laughs> yeah. and uh, I think the the popular ones the chefs uh, was the HRM and the other one um, the, yeah so the conversations there were much more different because one is they were, although they were stressed I mean I remember uh, every afternoons um, during the first two years because we never really had a music sub, uh, subject so we were much more connected to the the social si- circle of uh, the other schools other departments so uh, I, tr- I I wanted to uh, I wanted to get myself out of the circle of being in my own uh, thing and it's it was just that it so happened that uh, I met a lot of good people and I learned a lot of uh, things that uh, thing and I, I connected well it's funny I'm I'm uh, I'm always kind and loving to the janitors I always salute the janitor even the guards it was surprising that uh, uh, the guards uh, and even the engineer from the gymnasium uh, <laughs> always uh, says hi to me every time he sees me so I kind of yeah I kind of don't like to keep my circle small in terms of com- conversation. I like I said I yearn for that value, and um, I don't really I don't really say that I hated college, although I didn't really enjoy much of the learning experience. But the social side of it it was much more thing because I got to know. Had not been for that experience, I would have never met you. I would have never met all the other departments. So I think I take the social side um, more in the value of uh, school uh, of college prior to uh, learning. Although I learned a lot, but yeah, in terms of reflection and everything, that was uh, that all came into the package. So yeah, <laughs> awesome, bro. The 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 way life goes in in thing in our perspectives. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is that uh, with the stories that you've heard in this uh, episode there are a lot of similarities in terms of the way things are um for ian as as he mentioned he grew up in mid in the middle east i grew up in india 
uh, but the difference is that uh, our viewpoints are much more different. I, I was in isolation for more more years, but and uh, in in Ian's case, it was much more of the uh, it, much more of the vibrant, bright thing. Although I always see the light in um, in in the negative side, and I use that to my advantage. That's one thing I want to highlight in this conversation between me and Ian. And every time Ian and I have a conversation, it's like two bulls lock, locking horns. Uh, <laughs> the conversation never ends. So yeah, that's one thing that I'm sure even Ian agrees with me. So yeah, I one thing I remember. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> specifically, the one thing every time I think of Ian is that I think we had to go to B- BDO and we had to go to Burnham. Uh, and we were still talking and talking and talking and um, yeah that was so <laughs> fucking hell of a ride yeah and um, it, we that's one thing that's one thing with him and I and um, I think in in his in, in our case it's, it's all about conversation it's all about that like I said that building bridge kind of thing I've always wanted to build that bridge so yeah uh, wow this has been a phenomenal conversation this is more like a catch up in college <laughs> conversation that's just yeah, recorded actually. yeah um i would love to open up a conversation with you i hope you you'd come back to the rajiv show and hopefully join uh we'd, we'd uh, have a collaboration with other people and hear their viewpoints and um yeah i hope that that, that can happen soon hopefully and uh, i'm looking forward to that um well if um our listeners here who are tuning into our conversation would like to find you on social media. How would they find you on social media? Right. So um, first, check me out. Check my website. Uh, from there, you could see um, most of my social media links. I'll be trying to update that because I think I didn't quite link um, my anchor podcast and stuff like that. But anyway, so my website is actually Rayan Vierna. So that's R-E-I-A-N. And Vierna is V E. I, a V I E, sorry, what the hell? V I E R N E S dot com dot week site or that yeah, slash vision. And then you can look for my podcast as well. Um, recently, I've been doing some projects as well. I'm really glad to be here again. Anyway, um, my, my podcast is anchor dot FM slash ground up. Right. So. Yeah, you can just check that out. And my social media is just Ian Viernes. So you can look me up in Facebook. Um, that's facebook.com slash Ian Viernes. And for Instagram, you can look for Ian Viernes as well. So yeah, that's it. Awesome. With that in mind, uh, we had a phenomenal conversation. It was uh, is amazing having you, having a conversation with you and having to speak with you after a very, very long time. Uh, I want to personally say thank you, Ian, for coming to the show. And um, uh, I hope my listeners uh, enjoyed this conversation and picked up a thing or two. Uh, thank you again to Ian for this conversation. And uh, Yeah, thanks for having me, dude. I'm like, um, really grateful to be here. And for those listeners, uh, folks, uh, cheers and stay safe.